This video builds on a previous video where we were looking at how the RP150 could control a video hub, but now we want to look at Tally. So in such a scenario, you also want to know which source is uh, live. So when you select camera number two, you want to see on the monitor if it's red Tally for live or if it's green for preview and likely to go online just shortly. We can also use Skyway hardware to do that. So in uh, the case of the video hub, we had this one routing the video hub. Now we have another box which does protocol conversion for us. It, uh, it's also an Ethernet GPI link and this one connects to the RP150. It connects to each of these monitors to um, set the tally um, border on the, the, the screens and it connects to an ATEM switcher. So actually five devices are controlled simultaneously by this box. We, um, I consider this a fairly advanced configuration and I will go through the, the main ideas that are in it and then I'll leave you to read further in a document that describes how this solution is created. It's advanced. It is how you can really tweak Skyhawk controllers to do um, very interesting flows of information between units that they are connected to. Let's get to it. On my screen, we have the configuration page for the Ethernet GPI link. And um, over here, I have also a Skyhawk controller. All it does is it's controlling the ATEM switcher because um, if you watch the monitors, you'll see that we are currently selecting camera number two on this one. So that's what we have. If we just uh, go one step back uh, to the previous video, you know that we selected camera number one and then camera number two and camera number three, and we saw the routing happening. Notice one thing, as I'm doing this and having currently camera number three on, uh, sorry, camera number one on preview and camera number two on program, which is red tally, we s currently look at camera number three and it has no tally border. You can also see down here, it has no tally border right there. If I'm changing to camera number three on my video switch on the ATEM switcher, you see we have a green border for this and we also have a green border on the main screen. This is what uh, the uh, operator here with the uh, RP150 would have in front of him. And if I go to uh, source number four, yeah, uh, again, it disappears. But if I change to source number four up there, now we have the green tally as well. You see, it's um, by just those changes I made over here to, to route this and also the changes to the ATEM switcher, you can see that this tally information is, is uh, pushed around on these screens, all thanks to the Ethernet GPI link. The way this is done, let's look at the configuration. And again, we're using virtual hardware components. In this case, um, sorry. In this case, we have decided to name them a little differently so that we have some kind of idea about what each of these components are dis designed to do. The first one is designed to listen to program uh, for input number one on the ATEM switcher. And then, well, actually, I'm going to remove group number two so we have a better view here. Let me... So, now it's done. So... If source number one is on program, we'll generate a synthesized trigger that will set border A on uh, one of the smart scopes, monitor number A, that would be this one. By the way, how many devices were I connected to? If you look at the bottom of this configuration, you see that we have the Panasonic, we have the ATEM switch of smart scope number one, smart scope two, and smart scope three. And we could even add a few more if you wanted to. Um, so that's all in the IP settings, but let's get back to uh, the top of the list here. So same for the, the second virtual hardware component. It's listening to preview source number one. And if that is said, we are activating green tally on this one. So um, the virtual triggers are used just like we described in the other video for video routing. Listen, convert into a trigger and send that trigger to another device on the network. We do exactly the same for input source number two. Listen, input source number three and number four. If three and four are on, then it's now smart scope number two down here. Monitor A or monitor B set with green tally and red tally. On to the next one. And now it gets really complex because that was just what we have seen in the previous video. In the next one, we are listening now to the RP150. If camera number one is selected, then we generate a trigger that will set flag number one in the Ethernet GPI link. 
And we are also looking, or we are also setting flag number three if the same is the case. So we set flag number one and flag number three. Then we have another condition here that is listening to the second button. If camera number two is selected, it's setting flag number five and number seven. We have one for nine and 11 and 13 and 15. Okay, so now the question is, why are we setting internal binary flags in the Ethernet GPI link when we're changing camera? That doesn't really do anything unless we're using those flags somewhere else. And that's what we'll be looking at now. So the, the next thing that happens is that we, um, let me see, we were listening to the RP150. So the next thing that happens here is we are looking, uh, listening to the ATEM switcher. Basically we are saying, if the ATEM switcher has input source number one, then we'll set flag number two. If it has input no source number one on preview, it's gonna set flag number four, okay? So all these internal flags in the Ethernet GPI link are now being set by synthesized triggers depending on states in the RP150 and the ATEM switcher. And they have been so carefully designed that the next that happens, if you move on, you see down here, now we are, we are looking at the flags with something called a flag condition. So basically what happens right there is if flag number one and two are both set, then we generate a trigger that will paint the uh, border of the smart scope number three, this one up here, red, okay? Um, so in other words, if, if both, um, it's basically to say that the first flag is if camera number one is selected over here and if camera number two is selected over here on program, then we'll paint this one red. And that's kind of the logic that goes on from here on each of the next ones. It's, it's basically anding all these flags together that has been carefully arranged so that we can uh, create small meaningful ranges and, um, by, and make a binary trigger out of uh, this AND condition to enable uh, green and red borders on the smart view, um, or smart, yeah, it's a smart view, smart view, um, HD, 4K, whatever, up there. All this stuff is super advanced. I hope it was inspiring to you because it shows, it gives you a glimpse into what you can actually do with your Skahoy device if you are careful. Luckily, we have written a manual that describes this particular case, so you have a chance to read and learn about it, review this video maybe once more, and um, become clever enough to design your own solutions. Everything um, about this particular configuration is, in other words, available online for your, um, your reading and education into Skyhoy products.